Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In fact, welcome to a new series. We're gonna call this one Off The Pedal. And the idea is just gonna be, it's a little bit more laid back than our usual videos. It's just gonna be pieces to camera, discussing a few interesting topics, hopefully. So today we're actually gonna be talking about the E30 modification scene. And of course, that is a very big one. If you are familiar with E30s, I mean, these things have been around for 30 plus years now. They've literally been used for everything. And people modify them in, you know, in ways to make them more suitable to what they want to do with them. And I think that just shows how good a platform this actually is. There's plenty of people using these as track cars, you know, whether that be sort of a personal track car or even like a touring car. There's plenty of drift cars out there, rally cars, and even fast road cars. So basically, there's just so many things you can do on this platform. And I guess that shows how fantastic it actually is for modification. So let's start off with engine swaps then. Now, we're quite lucky with the E30 because it can accommodate a whole range of engines actually. And there's some pretty popular swaps out there. So a lot of people tend to swap the uh, M50s and M52 engines. Again, some people do the S50 engine, which of course is out of the E36 M3. Some people even do the S54 engine out of the E46 M3. So again, that's probably gonna be absolutely rapid out of car that only weighs 1200 and something kilos and I've I've seen a few with the M60 V8 I've even seen one car with the M70 V12 out of the likes of the E32 and E38 750i's so I dread to think that thing must be uh, pretty damn quick so yeah I mean that's engines obviously there's just so much you can do there's different complexities in terms of what's involved to actually convert to a bigger engine or you know some of those later engines and actually, if you do want to know more, I'll direct you to the E30 Zone forums. I'll leave a link below. And they've actually got guides on how to do swaps for most of the engines I've just talked about there. Of course, outside engines, there's loads of other stuff as well. You've got so many different suspension setups you can do. You can fit big brake kits. You can fit nice exhausts. There's just so much. A lot of people also switch out the steering racks to that of, I think the Z3 rack is quite a common one, or possibly even out of an E46. Uh, yeah, because basically the, the rack in the E30s from standard is quite slow actually, so if you're doing track stuff you'll want something a bit quicker. But I think once again it just shows that there is an E30 for everyone basically. Uh, whatever you want from your car, you can make the E30 that car. So it really does go to show how easy they are to modify. So in terms of uh, the plans for my car, I've sort of briefly touched on this on previous videos, but I think what I'm going to try and do is go like OEM plus. And if you're not familiar with that term, it basically just means keeping the car fairly standard, but upgrading a few things to add a little bit of extra performance and also probably just make the car a little bit more reliable and bring it into the 21st century. So that includes stuff like probably fit a, a back box. Um, I have replaced the front silencer but I'm looking at possibly getting a Scorpion or even an Eisenman uh, rear silencer as well, just to give some extra sound. I have actually just fitted new discs and pads all around uh, on the brakes, but eventually I might up upgrade the brakes slightly, maybe, maybe fit some higher spec pads and some drilled or vented discs just to, just to try and help keep the heat out of them because they do fade quite quickly. Obviously the, these cars are not performance cars and they, they do struggle a bit once you start pushing on. So, you know, maybe something that somewhere down the line, I will look to upgrade the brakes as well. Of course, suspension is another thing. On my car, it's actually not too bad. Things are a little bit on the worn side, but to be honest, it's absolutely fine to drive. But what I'll probably do is fit some slightly upgraded suspension parts a bit further down the line, just to make it ride that little bit better. I probably wouldn't be keen to particularly lower the car though. The sumps on the E30 can be quite low, so quite easy to catch on a curb or anything like that so probably try and keep the standard ride height I think of course you never get bored of that inline six sound it's just great and actually since I've got that new front silencer fitted it is much better actually the induction noise is really there you can just hear it rev right out okay guys so that's going to be it for this video like I say this is just the idea of this series is to just discuss some sort of interesting topics quite briefly. 
Um, and it's just a way to make more content and get some more videos up more regularly. So hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Oh,